I have recently been asked by someone to elaborate a little bit on this spiritual curriculum slide, which they saw in one of my other videos. So I thought it worthwhile just to record a video to explain the curriculum itself and to elaborate it uh, or elaborate on it uh, with additional scriptures. Uh, the idea, of course, here is, is just to prove that, you know, although we can put Paul's letters together and describe it as a curriculum, scripture proves it. And you will see that by adding additional scriptures or just providing some additional scriptures than just those little captions on those boxes, you will see that it grows into a curriculum by us as believers today in grace. If we follow this curriculum, starting at Romans and working ourselves, studying it into Thessalonians, uh, it will it will grow us spiritually and it will add on to our knowledge additional things, higher things, spiritual things. Um, as such, you'll notice the captions themselves. Since the slide is fairly self-explanatory, uh, we started the foundation of Romans. Uh, it refers to us as babes in Christ in, in Corinthians, Galatians. Paul refers to them as my little children. And then further up, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Paul starts to refer to uh, the believers as sons, right? growing up in the faith and so forth. And uh, just while I'm on the point, it's interesting to note that Romans to Galatians deals more on the uh, on the on the the part of us here on earth. In other words, living our Christian life here on earth, uh, overcoming the flesh. Whereas from Ephesians onwards to Thessalonians, Paul's focus is more on the spiritual body of Christ our vocation out in the ages to come, all right? And uh, it's more of a spiritual nature than Romans to Galatians, which is focused on us here on earth still as such, or um, adapting to Christianity while still f uh, in the flesh or in the carnal state. Okay, that's just an interesting point uh, that I thought I'd mention there. Another thing I must just quickly mention is, of course, Paul wrote 13 epistles. These are the nine epistles addressed to churches, uh, the church in Rome, the church at Corinth, the churches in the region of Galatia, and so forth and so on. So these are the church epistles which focus on our doctrine as part of the body of Christ. If we get to 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, those I've left out because those are addressed to those individual persons and was dealing more with a personal nature, with personal advice to those individuals, uh, with information about how to pastor a church, how to manage the, me the, the members of the church, various rules and regulations around uh, around you know church management etc. So although there's good doctrine and doctrine that's useful for a pastoral or a teaching aspect you know on for an individual overseeing a church etc. The doctrine is uh, is or how should I say the church content uh, contains the doctrine that is relevant to us. Uh, within this curriculum, within growing spiritually. All right, so we don't lay those individual uh, uh, letters aside to, to those individuals. But if we look at the curriculum as a whole, it's, it's more focused within Romans to Thessalonians. All right, so that's the reason why I don't have those individual letters in here. You will also see as we go through this uh, little lesson series in the videos that there is a remarkable pattern involved um, with the nine church epistles that Paul wrote to the body of Christ. And you'll see later on that there are nine epistles written by the Jewish apostles to Israel as well, Hebrews to Revelations. And uh, as we break open some details there as well in the comparison of these two sets, 
of epistles, you'll notice how there are some remarkable uh, um, similarities uh, in the nine epistles between the body of Christ and Hebrews, of course, to Revelations for the Jewish uh, church. Nevertheless, more on that later, but let's just focus on these nine epistles. And uh, I'm just going to focus on Romans to Galatians in this recording, and we'll deal with Ephesians to Thessalonians in a separate recording, uh, just to keep things shorter. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, the spiritual curriculum is named this way because it literally is a, a studying process. It's, it's the order in which we study Paul's letters in order to grow from our salvation into sons of God, uh, gaining knowledge on the will of God, gaining knowledge on what his plan is for our future, etc., etc. So if I had to jump as a new believer straight into Colossians, naturally I can read Colossians and I can attempt to absorb as much information that that letter provides, but you're not going to end up understanding a lot of it because it's the same as if I uh, am a young student and I'm learning mathematics for the first time and I'm busy learning my plus and minus and times and divide and the little times tables and so forth. And then someone gives me a manuscript or a mathematical handbook on trigonometry or geometry. You know, that young student can read through that, but none of it is going to make sense because they are still on the level of times tables and multiplication and division. So the same goes here. We cannot expect to understand the details and the depths of the spiritual content of Paul in Colossians and Thessalonians and Philippians and Ephesians, if we haven't come to an understanding of spiritual things or at least the transition from a carnal being that needs renewing of the mind that we, that we are taken through in Romans, Corinthians and Galatians, before we can even understand these things from Ephesians to Thessalonians. So this is why it's a curriculum. All right, I'm not discouraging you from going to read all of Paul's letters in whatever order you want. But I'm pointing out that if you really want to get the full value and if you really want to grow spiritually in the processes that is laid out for us in the Bible, according to the order of these books or letters of Paul, we have to start in Romans. It is absolutely critical. You're not going to get the value of studying Colossians and Thessalonians and things if you haven't gone down to the foundation and laid the foundation and understood the foundation. I would typically recommend to read Romans several times over. Remember, the uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, Paul says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman uh, who needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing. Now, we're not necessarily dealing with rightly dividing here. But the key term there was study. We need to study Romans. You need to read it several times over and more. All right? It needs to be embedded within you. It needs to start renewing your mind. And then complementary to Romans, as I will discuss shortly, is Corinthians and Galatians, which provide some information about what happens if you, if you divert off the foundation that Paul lays in Romans. So Corinthians and Galatians is actually letters of reproof and letters of correction that, uh, that where Paul tells one what happens if you divert off the foundation of grace. What happens to that Christian? And then naturally also how to correct oneself and come back to the foundation of Romans if you divert off uh, based on what happened in Colossians, sorry, in Corinthians and, and Galatians. Right, that I'll, I'll deal with shortly. But there it is, uh, friends, this is critically important. All right, if you're going to study the Bible specifically to 
the doctrine that belongs to us, Paul's letters. Paul saying that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. What Paul was given by our risen and glorified Christ, Jesus, was a doctrine that belongs to you and I. It's addressed to you and I today. We, we, we learn and we read the rest of the Bible so that we know where we fit in the greater plan of God. But when it comes to studying the doctrine and applying the doctrine in our life and understanding what God's plan and purpose is for you and I as members of the body of Christ today, then we have to learn this curriculum and learn it in the order in which God has provided. Another point I can uh, just mention here is naturally, well, you know, if you, if you go into the history of the Bible, Paul didn't write his letters in the order that is given to us in the Bible today. In other words, Romans was written after uh, both Galatians and Corinthians and Thessalonians. In actual fact, Thessalonians, uh, as we know it, is the first epistles that Paul wrote, and then Galatians, and then Corinthians, and then Romans, which in actual fact is the foundation to our faith today, was written almost right uh, at the end, just before Paul went into prison for that for his prison ministry, in which he wrote Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians, not necessarily in that order either. I'm just pointing out. Okay, so Romans, although it was written last concerning the epistles I'm going to deal with in this video, it's first in our Bible. And God placed it first in our Bible because the content of the book of Romans is absolutely and utterly the foundation of our faith. And we need to learn that and the subsequent corrections that come through Corinthians and Galatians before we can be stable enough to progress in our curriculum into Ephesians, which starts to look more into spiritual concepts. Okay, so I hope that makes it clear just from a practical point of view. But uh, for the rest of this video, and I can't believe it's already 12 minutes in, trying to keep these videos short. But um, for the rest of this video, let's, let's have a look at just some scriptures that prove the point of this curriculum, that prove that we need to take account that we study God's word and at least our doctrine through the, from the letters of Paul in this particular order. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, Romans all the way through to Galatians is focused more on our life here on earth. It's almost a preparation from a mental point of view, a renewing of our mind point of view, and an understanding of spiritual things before we get into Ephesians to Thessalonians, which deal with all the spiritual things, which deal with our actual nature. Remember, you and I are on this earth only for 70 to 80, 90 years, uh, assuming, you know, if the rapture is not going to happen at any point during that time. But this short period of time that we have on earth is actually to prepare us for what comes you know, in eternity. Uh, it's to prepare us in the short time mentally and spiritually for that which we are going to be doing in the ages to come for all eternity. So these four books, Romans to Galatians, is the foundation on which we are going to build everything else that we're going to learn about and that we are going to be living out in our actual spiritual vocation. Okay, so Romans is the Christian life on earth. It's interesting to note that Romans starts off, right? Romans chapter 1 verse 16 starts off where Paul declares that the gospel is the power of God to salvation. So it's, it shows you here that the book of Romans, which lays the foundation, all right? We can't start building without this foundation. So the book of Romans lays the foundation and it starts off with salvation, the gospel of grace, the power of God to save. And once we are saved, then we learn the concepts of the book of Romans. There's four cornerstones involved 
where we lay four cornerstones to produce the solid foundation. I'm not going to deal with those at this point of time, but it's good just to know that. But Paul lays four, corn four cornerstones uh, of, the, uh, of this foundation, and then he ends the book of Romans. Uh, if you had to look at Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, Paul ends with the statement that, uh, that it is the power of God to establish us. So he starts Romans with saying that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. But then he says that uh, Jesus Christ is able to establish us through the gospel, through the doctrine of the mysteries, through the preaching or the, uh, the, the, the scriptures of the prophets. All right. So we, we start with salvation. We end with a declaration of sta stability. That, that the Lord is, uh, uh, we are established within these things. All right. And then, of course, once you're established in the foundation itself, then you can start building upon it as we navigate up this curriculum. Let's start having a look at some scriptures. I've got those little phrases on those boxes, Romans, the foundation, salvation and sanctification, right? And our establishment on, on that foundation. 1 and 2 Corinthians is speaking to babes in Christ with regard to uh, still being in the milk, all right, uh, not, not being able to receive spiritual content. They're still carnal in their mind. So let, and then, of course, Galatians, Paul refers to them as little children. So you can see there's an advancement in growing up. But Galatians is still children, all right, still more carnal than spiritual. And it's only in Ephesians where we get to start growing up spiritually and becoming sons of God. But let's get back into some additional scriptures. So for the rest of this uh, video, I just want to provide you some additional scriptures from those books that provide clarity and proof that this curriculum is not just a term that we're making up. It's not just a way of selling how to study the Bible. This is genuine. Okay, and I trust that you will receive this uh, and see this for yourself as well. One last thing, Romans to Galatians is typically called the milk, right? When Paul refers to milk and meat in his writings, Romans to Galatians is generally the milk training. That's for the, the babes in Christ, the little children. It is when we get to Ephesians, to Thessalonians, that we're dealing more with the meat of the word. Right, that spiritual context uh, or content, and we and our minds need to be prepared uh, and renewed in that sense to receive the meat. Okay, so um, let me get just into a few scriptures. Um, if I had to lead you through just from a chapter point of view through the book of Romans, I want to just uh, point out some key words here that just show you how the foundation is laid. And then we're going to get into Corinthians with a few verses and Galatians with a few verses to describe how those two churches, how those three epistles, but the two churches relate to Romans. OK, so anyway, here we are. Romans 1 verse 16, as I've quoted earlier, Paul says, for I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Salvation is the opening statement. Obviously, Romans, uh, he, Paul goes a little bit deeper into the, the fact that all men have sinned, all right? We have all gone astray. Uh, if you read Romans 1 through to chapter 3, that there is no one that uh, is righteous and that we all uh, under sin need a, a savior. So Paul starts the gospel in this sense uh, by pointing out that you and I are lost, utterly lost without God, without his grace. Okay, we are all sinners. Interesting to note also, the book of Romans is almost like an elaborated gospel. You know, we, we are used to the gospel tracts where we, where we speak about the cross of Christ and so forth and so on. But if you, if you dig into Romans, the, the entire book of Romans from start to finish is an, a, a, a really deep outline or a, or a detailed exposition of the actual gospel. Of grace. Okay, and that's why you have in chapters one to three, starting off just pointing out that we need a savior, that we are sinners utterly, uh, 
and that we need the grace of God. And it's only from chapters 3 and 4 and 5 that Paul declares that by faith in Jesus Christ that we are justified without works, right? Just by believing in Jesus Christ. And that's where the gospel starts, right? Believing in Jesus Christ, believing in his cross work. From there, we go into more details about what God will start to do within us and how we will start to renew our mind. Okay, so if you look at Romans chapter 3, um, as I've mentioned, a key verse there would be uh, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 4 and 5 deal more with our justification by faith without works. In other words, that God says that you simply by believing in Jesus Christ, in his cross work, he, he God, justifies you. I always say justify as just as if I never sinned. God declares us innocent and absolutely justified, not for what we do, but simply for placing our faith in Jesus Christ, his son, and believing that his cross work is the work, the perfect work that is that is uh, uh, um, accredited to us to that degree, all right? And where our sins have been nailed to that cross and the work has been completed by Christ, all we do is trust in him. Then, very importantly, we get in Romans 5 to 7, Romans chapter 5 to chapter 7, Paul starts to speak about what has happened to us after we get saved. So notice how it's building up. It's still laying foundation here, but it's providing us a renewal of our mind as we study this and as we start to see and start to understand what God has done for, for us from a positional point of view. In other words, although we are still in the flesh, although we still are sinners, God has declared us justified by our faith in Jesus Christ, and he has done things in a spiritual context that we just need to trust, um, something that he's done in our heart and something that he's done, for, uh, he's done for us by his own declaration. So Romans 5 to 7 starts to tell us that God has moved us from the administration of Adam, that administration of death and condemnation. He's moved us, taken us out of that, and moved us into the administration of Christ which is grace, which is peace with God, which is forgiveness, all right, which is life. So the fact that we have been moved from this administration of death into the administration of life, uh, we don't feel it from ourselves. We just need to believe in it. And we have to start to renew our mind with regard to living in this ad new administration because our natural mind lives in the administration of death and condemnation. And we feel it and we sense it in our bodies if we are not renewed to what God has done for us. So this is the, this is the core of the foundation of Paul's letter to the Romans, is that we need to start getting renewed to what it means that God has shifted us into the administration of Christ and what it means and how we must start to think about it and understand it and learn about it and re be renewed about it and how that renewing of our mind should start to influence how we live here even at this point of time even though we are in a body of sin our mind and our state of consciousness if i can put it that way and our understanding of what god has done for us in the spirit should start to influence our very lives how we speak how we act how we react how we think all right, so this is the whole purpose of Romans, okay? So as I say, Romans 5 to 7 talks about the new administration. It talks about the fact that we are to start to look at life from a point of faith, that, we, that although we are in a carnal nature, that renewing must start to take place. All right, Paul helps us to understand that we are still babes in Christ in this, uh, in this, uh, at this point, uh, and that... If you look at your life, it's still, you know, from a new Christian experience, it's still driven by carnal thinking. Okay, but that has to change. 
So one cannot live for God from a carnal point of view. God will not be pleased. Um, although God's grace is upon you, God expects you to learn and uh, be renewed to the point that it starts to influence you to live towards God and according to his, his, uh, his desires and his will. Okay, so living for God in a carnal state is not what God's will is for you. We need to be renewed beyond that. There's also, as Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, another state that we need to be aware of is the fact that we cannot continue to live under law. Now, you know, I don't want to elaborate too much on this, but I just want to point this out. If you think back to when you got saved, naturally, as a young Christian, your mind has not been renewed and you still are fairly carnal. And we're going to see this in Corinthians as I elaborate on that shortly. Um, once you start to learn about the fact that you cannot please God and live for God in a carnal state, and you and you sort of grow beyond that initial babe uh, in Christ, the next phase in your Christian life is, is almost to say, right, Lord, I want to please you. So in order to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to read my Bible three hours a day. I'm going to go to church on Wednesday night and on Sunday morning and Sunday night, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to commit to this. And all right, you start setting rules for yourself. And some of you might be surprised to hear this, but those very rules and the laws that you place yourself under is actually a violation of the foundation that Paul lays in the book of Romans. And that, believe it or not, is what Galatians is all about. All right, so we'll get into elaborating Corinthians and Galatians just to show you how they, they tie into the foundation and how Paul lays out the foundation and what we are supposed to uh, be and live and be renewed on in Romans. But then Col Col uh, Corinthians is how we violate the foundation by a continuation in carnal living. And then Paul corrects us in that regard with advice in Corinthians. And then Galatians is the other side of deviating from the truth, where the Galatians were caught up in uh, law. Okay, and where you yourself of naturally sort of as you grow in Christ want to live for him more and you start setting rules and laws for yourself. And Paul says you cannot live like that because that brings condemnation. Okay, so we have to understand then that Galatians in itself is also saying that this is not how you should live. And Paul provides some information in Galatians to correct that mindset. Okay, Galatians is the key book here. Corinthians and Galatians show you what happens when you veer off the truth and advice further in that book to bring you back to the foundation of Romans. Okay, so we will get into those and I'll wrap up with those shortly. Romans 8 to 12 is discussing, discussing what your life becomes when you start to exercise the grace of God. When your mind starts to become renewed, when you come to the point of understanding that you have to go beyond carnality, that your mind has to be renewed to the spiritual aspects of what God's will is, and that you cannot set yourself rules, that you have to rely on the grace of God, all right, and to continue to grow in the grace of God. Um, Paul says there is no condemnation for those who walk by the spirit and not by the carnal nature. It's Paul in, in Corinthians chapter 12 talks about a renewing of the mind, that we are transformed, right, uh, from the pattern of this world to a renewed mind towards the will of, of Christ and God, towards living according to God's grace. Okay, and then chapters 13 to 16 uh, in Romans provides us with a practical view of what our lives would look like if we could see them through the eyes of God's grace. In other words, um, it's practical advice and practical uh, regulations on how our Christian life would be walked 
as we walk in the spirit and not according to our flesh. So that's the foundation that Paul lays. By the end of Romans, Romans chapter 16, Paul says that the word that is the, the, the context that is provided for us will establish us. If we abide by the content of the book of Romans, we will be stabilized in our faith. We will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Okay. And we will be stabilized and set so that we can start to build upon this foundation according to the spiritual aspects that God requires of us, which is outlined in Ephesians onwards. Okay. So there we go. That's the book of Romans. I've spent a lot of time now on this, much more than I intended. But the foundation is absolutely critical. And it is my advice for you to go and study Romans over and over and over until it settles in you. The advice and the counsel that Paul provides. All right. And then to complement studying Romans by reading Corinthians and Galatians to see how um, it looks if you veer off the truth of the grace of God. Okay, so with all of that said, let's have a look at Corinthians and Galatians. I just want to read you through a few verses just to prove that Corinthians and Galatians is this um, reproving and the correction phases of violating what we, what we learn in Romans. So if we look at Corinthians, just some background. The church at Corinth was an extremely carnal church. Paul speaks to them as babes in Christ. Paul, in, this, in, these, uh, in these two letters to the Corinthians, speaks about the milk of the word and the fact that they could not advance to spiritual content because they were still babes in their carnality, all right, uh, um, in, their, in their Christian walk. So let's, let me just prove the point here. Let me just read you a few scripture references here uh, just to show you that, that, this, that this is critically important to take note of and how it complements Romans and helps you to come back to the foundation. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1, Paul says this, And I, brethren, speaking to the Corinthians now, could not speak to you as to spiritual people. Remember, that's where God wants us to be. Once we have the Romans foundation, we are to move on in the renewing of our mind towards spiritual things, because that is our eternity. That is our vocation. That is where God is. You know, we as the body of Christ is the spiritual or the heavenly people and our vocation and, and purpose is out in the heavens. All right. So we need to start becoming spiritual in our thinking, in the will of God, in our purpose. Paul says to the Corinthians, I could not speak to you as to spiritual, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. That's chapter 3, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3, for you are yet carnal. All right. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal? And walk as men, Paul says. Interesting to note, Paul, Paul connects strife and envy and divisions and a, and a carnal walk to the carnal nature, to, the, to, to being babes in Christ. Okay, if you were to walk into a church today and you start to just look at the people and, and how they how they how they show themselves. If you see strife, if you see envy, if you see divisions in the church with regard to doctrine, you can immediately know those people are babes in Christ because their focus is carnal. Their focus is on the physical, material stuff, what is important, the performance and the acceptance, you know, those types of things. That is all babes in Christ. There is no renewal in the mind towards spiritual things. So, again, Corinthians shows us and teaches us that we need to move past those things, not by our own efforts, but by a renewal of the mind. Read Romans. Get indoctrinated with Romans. Right? That is the key to moving past these things. Okay. 
1 Corinthians 3 verse 4, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Look at that in the church. Again, that's the divisions as such. I prefer this person's teaching. I prefer that person's teaching. And so you see these things in the church and you can immediately label them as babes in Christ. Okay, it's unfortunate that most churches are like that because they don't know the curriculum. They don't study the letters of Paul, right? They don't rightly divide, which means that they don't recognize Paul's letters as their doctrine, but they go and and get into all of the Old Testament and the Gospels and Hebrews and James, and they try and bring Israel's doctrine in, and it, it causes confusion and contradictions and skewed doctrine. Okay, no wonder they still babes. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 11, Paul writes here, If we have sown unto you spiritual things. This is what Paul was trying to teach them. Remember, he said, I was not able to share with you spiritual things because your mind is yet carnal. But Paul's saying here in, in, verse, in chapter 9, as, as the progression of this, this Corinthians book goes, he says, I've sown to you spiritual things. It is a great thing if we should reap your carnal things. Okay, so it's a reaping of the carnal things so that the spiritual things can grow. Paul might even be saying here, I've sown you the spiritual things. How great is, or, or rather, you know, how sad it is that you are still exercising and, and displaying carnal nature. In other words, the, the doctrine of the grace of God has, has not yet come to that renewing of the mind. The focus is still on what we see in all the, the five senses, right? Spirituality is not in the five senses. It is the understanding of the will of God and exercising that, all right, out of you, allowing the word to flow out of you and influence your life. Okay, but the moment you are still in a reasoning state, reasoning in your carnal mind, there is no way that you can walk in the Spirit. There is no way you can walk by faith. Okay, we get to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Paul writes this, For this will be the third time I am coming to you. Interesting, we have two letters. Paul came and visited Corinth three times. Right? But there, we have the two letters at least. Paul says, um, it's the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or more witnesses, every word shall be established. Then Paul mentions to these Corinthians, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. All right? don't, don't prove others. Don't backbite others. Look at yourself. Turn your fingers to yourself. Examine yourself. Prove that you are in the faith. All right? Go and study the word and examine your life and see, is it matching what the word is saying? Know you not uh, uh, yourselves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates, which is wrongdoers or sinners destined to damnation. Right? In other words, no renewal of the mind. Okay, so please note, the book of Corinthians here clearly pictures or portrays babes in Christ because there has been no renewal towards spiritual context all right, of the will of God. No change uh, in the carnal nature. Things of the flesh are still more important than God's grace and learning and growing into the spiritual aspects of what God wants of us. Okay, let's now dig into Galatians. Re remember, Galatians is also a correction where the... Uh, a, a, a believer has veered off under law. Corinthians, you, you are not renewed in your mind. You are still carnal Christians trying to serve God in the carnal nature. That does not work. All right. But Galatians is the other side where you've passed the carnal nature, but now through your excitement on serving God, you go and you go to the extreme on the other side. You try and set rules and regulations for yourself, which is exactly what happened in the church in Galatia, right? Where the people were influenced by Judaizers 
who came in after Paul preached the gospel and preached Romans, I would say, you know, to establish that foundation. These Judaizers came in and started telling the Galatians that they are not saved unless they are circumcised and obey the law. And Paul got wind of this and wrote Galatians to say, um, this is wrong. You cannot serve God under the law. Okay, the law is contrary to grace. So let's read a few verses from Galatians just to bring this home, and then I'll wrap up on this video. Galatians 1 verse 6, Paul says here, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ under another gospel. In other words, these Judaizers influenced and changed the gospel that Paul preached, brought in works and other content, you're right, to say you are not saved until you do these things, where Paul's gospel is the grace of God as depicted in Romans chapter 3, 4, 5. Okay, now uh, he continues, by the way, with that verse, which is not another, right? But there be some that trouble you, those Judaizers, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. All right. Now, this could happen to you as well by you yourself making your own rules to try and serve God. All right. Circumcision was in the Gentiles, uh, in the Galatia state, uh, but he, that circumcision as a rule with which the Judaizers brought in and convinced the Galatians about is the same as you saying, I need to serve God and I will please God if I can read my Bible three hours every day. That is not going to please God. That is carnal thinking. Yes, it's good to read your Bible. Absolutely. I'm encouraging this, but you can't set rules for yourself. Okay, let's, let's have a look at additional verses here in, Gal uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, which will clarify it further for us. Okay, so it's Galatians 2 verse 21. All right. Um, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay, now this is connected to uh, Galatians 2 verse 20. Which, uh, uh, which is a famous verse, right? That, that Christ lives in me and the life that I live, I do not live for myself or by myself, but by faith in Jesus Christ. All right. Um, and then 21 again says here, I do not frustrate. So in other words, if you set rules for yourself, you're frustrating the grace of God, right? The grace of God is just to accept who you are and to grow in Christ. The focus is not on how to live. Hear me out here. In Romans and in Corinthians and in Galatians, the focus that Paul lays out here is more on learning and renewing the mind. The focus is actually not yet on living. You and I are not really, we are just passing through, right? As we know that saying goes. Our life is out in the ages to come. Our life is a spiritual life, uh, a heavenly life. That is our actual life. We don't need to set things and perform and try. You know, we, our life does not exist here. Our, the journey we have here on earth is a learning journey. It's a gaining understanding of the will of God and his ways. Learning his word, understanding your purpose in the ages to come. So where Paul says you're frustrating the grace of God, don't try and do things. The, the, the focus is not on the doing or the living. The focus is on the learning and the understanding of God's word and his grace. Okay, let me push on. Galatians 3 verse 1. Listen to what Paul says here. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, messed with your mind, all right, based on the gospel, the grace gospel that I deposited in there. Who's messed with your mind? That you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently, uh, ha have been evidently set forth, crucified amongst you. This only would I learn from you. Receive you the spirit or by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. 
So Paul's saying here again, are you trying to please God and live for God by the works of the law? Did your faith come? Did you receive the gospel and spiritual content by your own works or by the hearing of faith, by God's grace? Okay, the focus is not the doing, it's learning, growing in faith. Okay, Galatians 4 verse 19. Here's what the, uh, the little caption says about my little children. Paul writes here, my little children, for whom I labor in birth again, until Christ is formed in you. Notice the purpose of Paul here was to form Christ in them. All right, to, he, his laboring was to bring them to a renewed state or an understanding of the will of God and of spiritual things so that Christ could be formed within them because it's his life through you. It's the word and the understanding of the word that influences and works itself out through you. It's not your life. It's not your reasoning. It's not your decision making. It's not the rules you set for yourself. And it's certainly not the carnality all right, that, he, that, that might still exist in you. The word should suppress that and, and become the, the, the primary factor. And the word and the truth of the word and your knowledge of the word is what influences and comes out, brings forth life out of you. It's not you that lives, but Christ in you. It's the word. Christ is the word within you. It's the understanding of the word and the will of God. All right. And then lastly, Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty. Can you see that that is completely opposite to you trying to set rules for yourself? Paul says, stand fast, stand fixed and stable in liberty. Let the word itself work itself out of you. It's not you trying to set rules for anything. Right? You are in absolute liberty um, as such. So there it is. Stand fast in the liberty with, wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage under law. Remember, this is Galatians. So the, the issue here was the law. Okay. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. I can relate that to you. Not necessarily on circumcision, but if you do this, if you reason out a schedule, if you try and place yourself under rules and regulations, Christ will profit you nothing. It is the grace of God. It is not you trying to change yourself. It is a natural effect of the word changing you from within. It's a natural effect of you simply studying Romans. Corinthians, Galatians, to become renewed to spiritual matters, to suppress that carnal nature, all right, to understand which administration you belong to, to understand that it's not by rules and regulations, but it's the nature of God coming out of you towards good works, towards um, influencing your speech, your thoughts, your patterns, your ways, your reactions and your actions in life. Okay. And it's when we get to this stage, when these things have settled within you, that we push on to Ephesians, where Paul starts to forget about the, 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 the nature, the carnal nature, the things of the flesh, even the things of this world. And Paul pushes on and, 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 and speaks towards a, a spiritual future in, heavenly, in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm. Just read the first opening statements of the book of Ephesians and you'll see that your eyes are taken off the world and put, put, in, uh, put looking upwards, all right? Putting ourselves in, seated in heavenly places, understanding our vocation out in the future, all right, in, in spiritual context. So uh, this is where we're growing to, all right? It is an absolute requirement to get the word of God within you to bring you to a spiritual understanding of God and his word and his ways and his will. To get ourselves off 
the carnal nature and the rules and regulations and traditions of men and everything and all ordinances and all these these processes of religion and things which hold you in bondage. These are not the things that Paul um, presses you towards. Right? In actual fact, these are the things that you should cast off so that you, you can be liberated in the grace of God and put your focus and your mind and your understanding and your life towards the spiritual things which is going to be the eternity that you and I belong to. Okay, we will move into the book of Ephesians in the next video and look up, all right, towards those things. So you'll see a definite change in all that Paul has presented from Romans to, to Galatians. We're going to see a shift and a step up towards spiritual things in the rest of the books, growing towards sonship. All right, understanding the will of God, becoming examples for those uh, who are younger in their faith, exercising good judgment, and so forth and so on. Right, it's all spiritual, right, and that is our life, where it's going to. Anyways, thanks very much for your time. I I trust that this was revealing, and I trust that uh, you enjoyed this, that you look forward to the next video where we will take it one step up. And uh, thanks very much for your time. I'll see you in the next one.